It begins at the city of villains, Zinis, where it's prominent with illegal activities, the city of hell closest to being on hell while being on earth. Mice were on the floor, different species of monsters existed and beating people up. Meanwhile, a black-haired person just passed by and is famous known as Weiss. He was walking until he saw a chained-up individual. He noticed her hair was aqua and her ears were pointed upwards. A high elf is what he thought she was. High Elf was unknown to the general public, and its features were what was mentioned before. It was believed they were extinct and possessed all kinds of magic. He remembered reading about it, but didn't believe it was real. He alerted the slave dealer's attention, then asked about his work. He, he asked if he had lots on his hand, and if he sold anything. Hand. Slaves needed food and supervision. Therefore, you cannot buy that many at the same time. A short while ago, the inhabitants of a mansion on a hill were killed because of Weiss. Flashing back to when Weiss asked a goblin for fried chicken, but the owner of the establishment wasn't present. The owner was taken to the mansion on the hill. Weiss was angry and held on to the goblin for not protecting the owner. He had no choice but to do something for fried chicken. Well, he went to the mansion and had the owner in his magic. The person asked if he will get away from it, but in Zenis there is no law to exist. The fried chicken shop owner wanted to repay Weiss, and he just wanted the shop open. There were slaves in the bottom of the mansion just existing. Lots of slaves of all kinds of organisms. He didn't realize, but after that, thieves came to take the slaves and sell them. Then they were all split between different merchants. He sold four that morning, and had the remaining elf left. The elf left in question was used for experiments. That is why her looks were ragged. It wouldn't be shocking if she was worth millions and people like him wouldn't know about her price. The slave owner didn't know what to do with her saying he would feed her to the dogs. He chuckled saying it'll make her happy. Weiss asked for the price and it would depend and the owner wanted to give him some better slaves. He just wanted to help his business, wanting to take that so-called leftover. Her price was discounted just for Weiss but he overpaid. He demanded for her chains to be taken off, and he was doing as said. She was free, but for some reason her expression didn't change at all. He told the girl they'll be going. The person had a reaction, but didn't know what was happening. He grabbed her hand, saying it's time for them to walk. He didn't know a single thing about parenting, even though he adopted her. He compared being a father for the first time as like walking blind in the dark. Back at their humble estate, he wasn't mentioning a huge variety of names. He asked if she could talk, and what name she wanted. The elf didn't have any reaction, and he thought she didn't know his language. First, he had to teach her how to talk, and assumed she must have been a slave her entire life. He wasn't a good person, and only knew about destruction. He wanted to raise her as his daughter and had to help her become conscious. He kneeled down and patted her head. He told her from now on he shall be her dad. He pointed at himself calling himself dad, and she was daughter. No reaction from the elf, and he was thinking of what to do. Well, this is his story of how he became a father, and she wet the bed, making him act in disbelief. It was his fault for not taking her to the bathroom earlier, an accident that could easily be avoided. He was thinking about bringing her to the lowest level of a dungeon, but maybe he was negligent. It was time for bath time because her smell wasn't the best. Hot water started to pour on her, but she was still looking down. He threw a towel on her and laughed because she looked just like a ghost. Lots of random garbage came from her hair because it was her first time in a bath. He started to play with the soap bubbles and made different shapes on top of her hair, a long road because she wasn't even smiling. He yelled out loud in denial because he didn't have a single pair of clothes to give to her. Well, he did have some clothes to give. It was the curtains of a window, and he wanted to buy something appropriate to give to her. He was sorry and went upstairs. He showed her a comfy bed for her to sleep. He felt tired and was ready to sleep, but that was just his imagination, and realized he didn't feed her. He had piles of alcohol and dry bread. He brought to the table jerky and bread while putting her onto a chair. The child was eating quickly, and he realized she must have been hungry from the start. He wanted to give her better food and wondered what life she must have lived. The bath and drinks were prepared and the dangerous fire hazards were put away. 
He would go shopping and leave her alone on the estate. The child wasn't responding and he realized she truly didn't understand anything. He took every precaution he could have by using his magical powers. He'll be right back after he puts a barrier that prohibits entrance from the outside. At a clothing store, he slammed the doors open, yelling for help. The elf lady asked what he needed and recognized Weiss. She asked if he needed something from her and he came to buy girl clothes. She asked if he kidnapped someone, but rather he bought a slave instead. She asked why he was desperate and if he was cruel enough to have a thing for little girls, but he had a change in mind. He needed her to pick an outfit and slammed gold coins right onto the counter. She asked if he was trying to buy all the clothes and his thoughts were, women clothes were expensive. The age of the elf was asked and a statue happened to be the same size as her. He would leave her to the task and the elf was ready to meet this daughter of his. He was back and asked if she had been a good girl. He just looked at her blank stare towards the ground. She hadn't moved since he left, which was a surprise. He doesn't cook, but from now on he will be cooking. He asked if it looked delicious. He showed her the utensil and explained how to use it in its name. He brought the food towards her mouth, and with great help, she complied, and ate the food finally showing emotions towards him. Very good of her, and he kept on feeding her the food. The next day, Hollow was in front of Weiss's mansion. It was too much clothing in Weiss's eyes, but she'll take back whatever doesn't fit. A quick glance at this elf, and she understood how adorable she was to make Weiss grow fond of her. She was confused on why her hair color was blue instead of green. It was rary, that is why he bought her without a second thought. She was ready to allow her to try clothes, and wanted him to leave. Even Hollow, who held a strong position with the elves, didn't know she was a high elf. Hollow was busy calling the elf lady many names and wanted to eat her, and Weiss tried to block her sayings. Weiss was finally allowed in to see what she was wearing. What transformation that set of clothes really do to make her look like a different person. Weiss agreed with what I said, and she was super cute. It exceeded his expectations, and because of his pay, she was happy. She added underwear and pajamas just for her. He appreciated her offer to help raise this elf girl. Hollow left saying her goodbyes, and Weiss was excited to bring her to bed with her pajamas. His view was that she was adorable in those pajamas. He slept well and saw the girl holding on to his shirt while sleeping. She was sleeping peacefully and soundly, and he was excited. It was a good day because she allowed him to enter her heart. Well, that may not seem like the case because she wasn't responding when Weiss introduced himself. He was in despair because of this nothing. He had no clue what to do. He couldn't predict what she was thinking, and he had a life away from children. He wondered during his childhood if he thought the same as her. Weiss, a talented young mage is praised by an unseen speaker for mastering high-level magic at such a young age. The speaker mentions that Weiss's future is assured, with a problem-free childhood and a guaranteed position in the magic ministry. He received love from his parents like everyone supposing it was a happy family. He ran away from the capital because somebody else was choosing his future. Now that he thought about it, he wondered how the person he hung out with was doing at the Ministry of Magic. It was heard she had unprecedented promotions becoming an assistant director. She was boring, unable to comprehend jokes, but they were friends. He remembered those ugly glasses, and if she took them off, they would look better. Without realizing, he fell asleep, and she was too. He couldn't solve her indifference by himself. It's true she looked like a doll when Hollow dressed her, and no slaves are free of energy. No reaction was extreme, but they both had no experience before, so they didn't know. They were going to ask old man Lorett, who had raised five kids decades ago. Hollow was just in the mood to drink, too. Lorett looked wise and said, love was the answer. He said love was something that will fill her desperate need for something in the world. Hollow asked about the drink and its ingredients, but it was a secret. Weiss raised that girl because he felt something all he had to do was treat her from the heart. Hollow was hitting his back, agreeing that love would be the answer. Since he didn't have many qualities, it was fine for him to be accompanied by an elf girl. Well, he was off and told Lorette to give her more drinks if she wanted. At his place, he grabbed the elf and decided to feed her a special desert. 
He spoon-fed her and congratulated her on eating it. He would pat her head whenever the opportunity arose. If she was still blank-looking, he would still talk. He positioned her hand around a spoon, teaching her how to hold it. He spun her around, telling her she did great. Memories from his childhood that his parents enjoyed doing with him, she was doing with her. He noticed she got tired from reading and tucked her into bed, hoping she was enjoying this. He was a total stranger, not his father acting like a mother as well. He was going to be fine because he was going to give his all to her. The next morning, he was having trouble deciding what egg dish to present to her. He decided on ham and eggs, then turned around. The elf managed to wake up by herself. He patted her head, asking if anything was wrong, and she made a cute reaction that sparked joy right into him. He didn't know what was happening with her and brought a fork to her hand. She was struggling to put the egg into her mouth and eventually did. They cannot have a conversation, but day by day she was slowly growing. The change was mysterious, but this made him surprisingly happy. Later, he bursted through the doors with great news. Hollow was asking why he was causing a commotion, but he told her loudly that the elf could eat by herself. Her reaction was lazy, and he wanted her to redo it. She was more surprised by his outfit that got dirty by doing chores. The elf also could walk and sit on the chair by herself. The old man handed him a drink, saying, Isn't it great? And he couldn't believe it happened. He didn't think he did anything special while thinking of love. At home, Vice was teaching the little elf his language, and she was complying well. He would hug her and compliment how good of a job she was doing. Her memory was outstanding and they kept going for more words. Ouya, she said, which made him think. Now they were practicing their R's together. She seemed to struggle with them and there was no rush. They were done, and it was time to eat, and she slowly lowered himself from his arms. She ran to the chair, climbing on it, and then sat down looking at him instead of the floor. He looked at her and laughed. He was ready to make her an unforgettable meal. Later, she was looking at a book with a cat and managed to say the correct name. She could already read the animal's name. She was naming all the animals in the book, and she did love animals. She eventually stumbled to a camel and pronounced it Camus with such enthusiasm. A diabolical-looking person asked if he wanted books about animals. The elf girl confirmed that is what she wanted. He wanted illustrations of animals, but what was for sale was on the counter. He asked about the pile of books having an illustrated book, but that person hurt his book, unable to sort through. Weiss decided to use his magic to help him while holding her. Books started to soar throughout the sky and the girl thought it was just like a bird. The owner was bewildered by this. He wondered about that magic, but Weiss kept it a secret. When they came home, she had a book and Weiss was holding onto food items. She was eager to open her book while Weiss was going to make stew for dinner. She looked at the books and her happiness skyrocketed. Weiss was cooking and then heard her say, Lily. It hit his brain that he should do something. He turned around and she was saying Lily again. He was happy to hear she pronounced the L. Lily Reed was the author's name and she repeated it. It was considered a lucky guess. He realized the word Lily should be used. He decided to name her Lily. He brought her up, announcing her as Lily Frenberg. Over time, Lily began to absorb information at a quick pace definitely deserving of a high elf. Lily announced her arrival at a bar, and she was somewhat popular, because in Zenus, she was the only healing character. Weiss didn't want dirty hands on her. Lily managed to order both their meals fluently, and the bartender was impressed. Lily was growing in many different ways every day, and he had no other choice. What a beautiful day, Lily said. He thought so too and said the sun likes Lily. She giggled at his remark, and Weiss began to walk quickly to a store. Lily ran into the clothing store and hugged Hollow, who noticed how energetic Lily was. He apologized for coming frequently, but that was no issue because he was a paying customer. Lily wanted to see clothes, and he wasn't willing to buy her clothes because of how strict he was. He yelled at Hollow, saying if she expected him to be a fool instead of being strict, he wouldn't spoil Lily as a perfect father, and Hollow doubted him. He was going to leave Zenus next month. There were things he couldn't teach her, and her environment mostly had slaves around themselves. He wanted to go back to the capital and send her to school, and Hollow asked if he was from the capital. 
he immediately remembered the times he was swarmed by lots of old heads. He ran away from the Ministry of Magic and Hollow asked why but Lily got their attention. She looked at them with her cute eyes and Weiss insisted not buying anything. Lily was going to cry and made such a sad face that Weiss was ready to pay. Hollow now agreed the idea to send her to school was a good one. Weiss's friends gave him a drink and clothes for Lily that'll make her match the city girls. He thanked those two, and Hollow felt uncomfortable when he was away. Zenus, the city had many villains and exists as a city because of him. Her shop wouldn't exist if he didn't eradicate those he didn't like. If the city collapsed, it wouldn't affect her, and if she needed help, he was willing to come to her. Hollow was blushing and asked if it was a declaration, but he just thanked her for giving clothes. He told her to take care, and she was about to say something until Lily interrupted. Lily thanked her for the wonderful clothes, but Weiss urged her to go. Well off they go to the capital. A few days later she asked if they were taking the carriage, but it was not needed because they were close. He asked if she was tired, but it wasn't because her dad was present unlike yours. He told her the capital was right past the forest, and she wanted to walk by herself. It looked like she ran over there, and he told her to not trip. Her eyes sparkled when she saw the entire city. She noticed the huge wall, and it was where Weiss was born. He asked if Lily would do what he asked and she would try. He told her to be well-behaved, and when asked, she was an orphan. There was protective magic, and since he was from the city, he had no issues going in, but Lily may have issues getting in. Because she was an elf, he cannot say she is his real daughter and had to hide the fact she was a slave. If it gets discovered, an unfortunate situation is going to unfold. He wanted Lily to behave while she was walking closer. Lily was surprised and started to wave her arms up and down when she noticed the soldiers. He picked her up and apologized for her behavior. He told his name, and Lily announced hers too and the guard thought his name was familiar. He told the guards to get in touch with the assistant of Zigline. The guards were shocked by the name. One ran inside the capital while Lily asked who it was, and it was his friend. She was considered a big sister who would be nice enough to let them inside the place. Lily asked if she was as kind as Hollow. He confirmed it, but in terms of a study subject, she was nice. Lily was sleeping because it was taking a while. Weiss was busy playing with Lily's cheek. He then makes another expression with her cheek making him grin. Soldiers positioned themselves and saluted the girl walking towards him. She asked if it was an attack with him walking to her with his daughter. She had no humor and had those fat glasses still. Zeglein Floyd, assistant to the Minister of Magic. At the reception office at the Ministry of Magic office, Lily was just sleeping peacefully. He looked at the surroundings and said they must be making money. They were not non-profit, and he said because she was serious, none of them changed. Zeglein took a glance over at Lily when she was sleeping. She asked if it was his real daughter, and this made him spit his coffee out. He told her to look at the ears, and she couldn't notice it properly because she was nervous. Lily, still dreaming about candies, was asking his dad for one while sleeping. She noticed something about Lily, and Weiss said, Yup. She didn't even know he was friends with elves and told her Lily was indeed a high elf. She wanted to take Lily to the lab, and he wanted her to calm down. He told her a story about finding Lily, and wanted to take her to school in the capital. Lily was an orphan, and he wanted her to live a happy life. Her life was miserable, and he wanted her to be happy. As a father, he requested her assistance. Their school offered the highest quality of education, and a high elf would greatly benefit from that. He asked if she could get her enrolled next year. He had two requests ready to ask. One was to pay whatever it takes for a safe house, and next was assigned bodyguards for Lily. He wanted to keep the fact Lily was a high elf a secret. She yelled that she would be a national asset, but he didn't want to involve a child in adult issues. He apologized and was going to pay her somehow. He would help her with her work as her personal employee assisting the ministry. She agreed to his requests and she would bring him to the safe house in no time.